Welcome to the second segment of From Back at the Desk. Um, we've been absent a little bit because our Sports Saturday editor, David Reynolds, has been on the IR. Um, he, uh, he had an injury, uh, so we had to wait for him to go through rehab. But he's back, full strength. Um, almost full strength. Almost full strength. Um, so, yeah, that's David Reynolds. I'm Paul Latimer, the sports editor, and uh, we're going to do a little, bit, a little bit of talking um, about UNC football. Um, so UNC beat Connecticut, obviously, they're 2-0 they're right now. Um, what did you see out of, the, you know, questions, big questions of O-line. What did you see out of them, Dave? Give me, a little, give me a little spiel. I mean, in case you're not informed, two offensive linemen for UNC were reported as being out right before the game. Uh, Luella Dyer and uh, uh, what was the other offensive lineman? Uh, uh, guy. I honestly don't know about Cooper. When Cooper. Cooper, yeah, Cooper. Cooper. Um, so you had two first-time starters in there against Connecticut, and they made a couple mistakes. Um, you know, Pal and I noticed uh, um, Greg Ellaby um, missing a couple blocks, making a couple misreads on some stunts from the defense. Um, so TJ Yates was sacked six times. Um, Sean Drawn barely got 10 yards on the ground on 17 carries. Um, so, I mean, that's obvious problem. UConn was stacked in the front against UNC because UNC's passing game's been a little bit uh, shaky the first couple of games. Yeah, the receivers. They haven't had anyone really become a go-to guy. Um, Greg mm -hmm. Little's the guy that they look at, uh, but he hasn't been he hasn't been putting up, certainly not a key mix numbers. Mm -hmm. um, the only other guy that's, that's really uh, stepped up for UNC passing in any way has been tight end Zach Pinalta, who we just found out today uh, is now out for three to four weeks because he dislocated his right um, I don't even remember the name of the bone, but he dislocated a bone in his right foot, celebrating the second passing touchdown of the year, his first passing touchdown of the year to tie the game. So that's TJ Yates' safety net gone. So I think the, the only other guy that really did anything um, was Eric Highsmith, the freshman, who had, I think, had four catches, 59 yards against UConn. Um, that's really, there's not a whole lot beyond that. Johnny White caught a touchdown, but. Mm -hmm. That's his only catch of the year. I've actually been impressed with Greg Little. I, I was impressed with him at UConn. He didn't get very many yards. I think he only got about 50 yards. But, I mean, he caught every ball thrown his way. Um, he ran the right routes. He wasn't, you know, going long all the time. He wasn't looking for that big play. He was just looking for some solid yardage. Um, so I think that was encouraging. That's what Yates said in preseason, that he was looking for him. But you're right. UNC does need that deep threat. I think they thought it was going to be Josh Adams. Um, but he's dropped a couple of balls early, and uh, I mean, Highsmith's the only one who's been catching consistently. And I mean, yeah, you just got to feel terrible for a guy like Pianotto. I mean, Yates was looking for him, I think, every single play in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and yeah, the Yates one injured 20 on the yard, touchdown. The 20 yard catch that was, that was kind yeah. of the one that broke it wide open. Exactly. Um, and yeah, I mean, that guy, because last year he caught his first career touchdown. And against Notre Dame, and they got hurt in the celebration for that one too. Maybe that guy just parties too hard. I don't know. It's Who knows? <laughs> um, but okay, we know about what about the defense? We know the offense is the offense has been having a little bit of trouble, but UNC's defense has been pretty stout. I mean, first couple games. Like that. I mean, the player that's really stepped up for UNC, Robert Quinn. I mean, absolutely. Every single pl like passing play, he gets great pressure. I mean, he's just been getting out there. He doesn't, I think he only has six tackles in one sack, but his impact has been tremendous. I mean, without him, I mean, there definitely would have been a couple more points scored. But I mean, I mean, he if, if you were watching the game against Connecticut, he was responsible for that safety because he was going all the way around that, that left tackle, and he just got tackled to the ground in the end zone. Um, so I mean, he's basically responsible for two points there, uh, and that gave UNC the win 12 to 10. And I think it's fitting, it's probably fitting, that UNC, the last play of that game, UNC set like they got a sack. Mm -hmm. That was the defense deciding. I mean, more or less the defense won that game. Right. I think I think it's okay to say that. That's the safety is the defense fault. The, the game ending mm -hmm. sack is the pressure that the defense brought. I mean, I mean, you can't even you know pin all of those ten points on UNC's defense because no. I mean Yates threw an interception that was right in the twenty five yard line. Um, so I mean, UConn would have at least gotten three out of that, and they just ended up getting seven. So yeah, absolutely. So now you know UNC's actually played a Division one opponent. Um, mm -hmm. Now they have East Carolina, which the last time he played East Carolina down in Greenville uh, it was a close game, but ECU, I think they won 31-28. I think it was 34-31. 34-31, that's right, because it was the last second field goal. Um, what, uh, what's the deal with this ECU team? They put out a lot of NFL products lately, but are they still the same team? Uh, not quite. Um, Chris Johnson was on that team two years ago. He was very pivotal. I think he caught an 80-yard screen pass for a touchdown. Yeah. You know, 4-2 speed. Um, and that was against a very young UNC defense. Um, what is a constant is uh, senior quarterback Patrick Pinkney 
Um, he's still there. He's, he's still, still there. there. He got next year of eligibility this year. He's, he's actually been struggling though. He's uh, only thrown 40 or completed 42 percent of his passes um, in his first two games, and one was against West Virginia, which is you know a pretty strong Division One opponent. But another one was against you know FCS school, which is basically Division Two. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's really got to step up in this game because Deontay Williams, Kendrick Bernie, they're going to be all over back there. Yeah. He's got to look out for, you know, concert event and Bruce Carter as well. They're just flying over the, all over the field. Yeah, I mean, I, that's the one question I have is because when UNC played that ECU team, it was kind of, uh, it's almost a, a reversal now because UNC was so young and ECU had some experience and was really starting to get good. And they were even better last year, mm -hmm. and now they're kind of catching ECU after losing all those guys, Chris Johnson, right. and a yeah. lot of their a lot of their weapons on offense and defense. And UNC's got everyone back, mm -hmm. so I mean, I, I, I'm interested to see what happens. But I mean, Skip Holtz is probably one of the. I mean, I would say he's the best coach in Conference USA, but he's definitely like a good, a really solid young coach. Yeah, and along with that, I mean, Skip Holtz isn't stupid. He saw what <laughs> UConn did against the UNC last week, yeah. and he's going to be stacking, you know, eight people in the box trying to stop John Houston. And I mean, if you, if ECU's offense can muster anything, you know, 17 points, yeah. that might be enough. I mean, because yeah. we you know, team pretty much knows what it's going to get from players like Greg Little, you know, Sean John Houston. Just, they're going to give a consistent effort. But some of their young receivers, I mean, they're going to need one of them to bust along the line just to at least free up some space and get get rid of those eight man fronts. They're going to yeah. see. I mean, event, they're going to be open. They, they've been they've been open all year. The only the only thing is they haven't. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been they struggled catching the ball. Plus, Yates hasn't been getting time to throw it to him. Yeah, that's true. So, that's true. I mean, yeah. if you can get some time to throw it to him, I mean, you're going to catch some of those open passes at least. Yeah, so. that's true. So, well, that's uh, that's all I really got to talk about, to yeah. be honest. Um, I, yeah. I, I think my last point would just be that I think this might be Josh Adams' last, <laughs> uh, what, how do you call this? Last, uh, last, uh, last chance to prove himself. Yeah. Because He's still the starter listed on the depth chart, but he has been dropping some passes. He hasn't done that great of an impact. But, but Highsmith is now number two. The depth chart's right over oh, there. Highsmith is. is number right behind Josh Adams. And he wasn't even on the depth chart before. Mm -hmm. He's up there number two right behind Josh Adams. So there's some movement. I mean, Adams has got the talent. He's just got to catch the ball. He's got to focus, relax on the field. They were really high on him. Mm -hmm. um, but all right, that, this has been the second segment of back from back at the desk. Yes. Um, again, Dave Reynolds, Kyle Adler. Dave Reynolds is back and healthy. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back more regularly from here on out. Thanks. Thank you. It was fun. It was fun. It's always fun. <laughs> it's always fun. <laughs>